This is a couple of quick ways to populate your Zotero library. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we've got Zotero open. And I've already started to do some work over here, so we're going to ignore this for the moment. And pop back on over to a general browser. And I've typed in FDA cannabidiol guidance because I want to find something um, just real quick to add to my uh, to my library. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is you know FDA regulations press release announcement looks pretty important. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this page. And when I open it, then I've got my plugin here. I'm using Google Chrome. I can click on my plugin that I always have open to say save to Zotero, and then I can. Uh, it will give me some choices for where to save. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in my uh, CBD and cannabis folder. So I want to expand this window and then come up to CBD and cannabis. And I've separated out because I'm getting information from all different kinds of places, different ways, uh, places that I found information so I can go back and track. You might not necessarily need to do this, but I'm going to put this in my general web searches folder. So I will click on that folder and click done, and it's going to give a snapshot of the page and it will give me a link. And then if I scroll on over into Zotero, here is what it gives me. So. It will give me a link. It'll give me, there's no abstract. It's saying the type of article is a journal article. And this is more of, I think, let's look at it again. I think it's just um, a report. It's oh, news and events. So it's a little news article. So I can come on over into Sotero and just really quickly fix it by saying, let's say I could um, call it a, um, oops, nope, let's, I'm getting on the wrong thing here. I will call it a hmm, magazine article news. Well, it's a report. I, I guess we'll, we'll call it a report. That would sort of work. It might be more of a blog post. But anyway, if I call it a report, some of the fields are going to change. But then I can add information in here that will give me some more keywords. More on this in a later video when I want to actually add notes and tag things here. But for now, I've just basically clicked on a web page and this is what makes Zotero so fun. It becomes like a scrapbook. So um, for a lot of your pre-reading, you can organize your information. So I've got this link in a folder. So now the other way I can populate my library is doing the same over in PubMed. So here I am in PubMed and I put in my search terms in my other window that say cannabidiol and inflammation. And so I get 267 results. So one of the ways that I could add these to my uh, Zotero stash, we'll call it, I could click on this and do the same thing that I just did. So I can click on this reference. This is going to bring me to the entry page here. And and then I can um, click up here and save it to Zotero. But I've got 267 references and I'm, I might just be counting these up for a review or I might be um, using it for another purpose. So I'm going to scroll back on over for a second, come back to my home page and say if I've got 267 results and I know that these terms got me here, what if I just want to save all of these? So what I can do is click on send to. And I can send to a citation manager. This is just brilliant and fun. I hope somebody's geeking out on this with me. And now here's where I often make a mistake. I don't read this page. All results on this page or all results. And I really want, I just want an entry for all 267. So I'm going to have this create a file. Give me a file. Okay. And boom. And you can see now it's downloaded into my downloads folder. It just happens lickety split. So now I go into Zotero, come into Zotero, and I am going to file, import, import from blah, 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 something like this, or you could import from Mendeley. They're all talking nicely to each other nowadays. Then I'm going to click on next. And I'm going to come into my downloads folder. And here it is. Look at that. So clicking on OK and then click next and it's going to import hopefully fingers crossed all 267 references so we might have to wait a moment for this but one of the things you can do is if you're doing a systematic review and you can import the citations that you have and basically count them all up then you can you can do your pre-reading but also have everything for your systematic review laid in for you later on so this will take a little time for all 267 um, to import, 
And while it does that, I think while it does that work, I'm going to click over here and just show you that this set brought in the first 20. So the first time I did this, what, what comes in is all of the entries and all of the metadata. And so if you didn't want to select every single entry and do 200 or so at a time, which seems to be taking a long time to do, you can do these in smaller batches. And that uh, then I can go ahead and take these uh, references. And if I got these all from PubMed, I've got a little CBD and hemp for PubMed. So I can click on all these entries and I can drag them over to this collection in CBD and hemp from PubMed and they will be added to that collection. So we're populating that as well. So, oh, and here's my 267 articles. So the same. So now this is going to set up for a nice little video that comes after this, but I'm going to select everybody in here. And we want to remember when you get stuff from PubMed, it's not necessarily all peer reviewed research. There's a lot of reports in here too. So there might be things you can't do for your research, but at least you've got everything in one place and you've made your own customized database. So now I have 2,536 items in here for uh, CBD and hemp that I found in PubMed. So I hope this was helpful as you're trying to populate your library and it's a really nice feature uh, in using PubMed and looking for uh, health type research. So happy researching.